Hello, it's Sarah, and today I'm going to do another art journal page. Um, this is the one I'm at the moment uploading. I did a start to finish, and I'm going to do a similar page. going to change the palette a little bit, um, use a few different techniques, uh, and do another whimsical page. So I'm just going to open this to a flat line page. I could put like some washi tape, I think. Um, because it did get a little messy. So I'll just use this and see what happens. Uh, just to protect that page. A smidge. Oops, let's get it on straight. I could actually put like piece of paper here too if I really wanted to protect it right just while I'm doing the sloppy stuff that's good and then I'm going to need one for under this is my um, Diane Reevely um, delusions journal and um, I'm loving the way it's holding up and it's got bigger I don't know I like it um, so I'm going to do another texturing technique today with the gesso. So first to seal the page, to just get this to be a non-porous surface, you need to either get a coat of gesso or some type of a sealer, so like a, um, a medium of some type. And I'm going to use gesso because I like that white color. And gesso comes in black too, but I've never tried black gesso. And I'm going to use an old gift card and spread it on here and coat it. And I actually used quite a bit, so I'm going to—I'll end up. I'm going to put this back in my jar. And I know a lot of people say it contaminates the jar. I don't happen to—not in this case, anyway. I'm sure it's true for some things, but I don't mind. Um, so this is kind of thick, and that's what I want. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm not pressing hard at all. I'm just spreading it. Actually, I'm going to leave it on there. Now, it'll be too thick. I don't want it that thick, so I am going to put this back in my uh, bottle as best I can. And this is the Liquitex brand. I'm, I'm running low, so I don't know if I'll try another brand. I really like this one because it squirts, it's the fluid Liquitex Gesso and it says it's matte and it's pretty fluid. Actually it's in the middle of the fluid and thick range. Um, but I like that it squirts out of the bottle. That's what I like about it. Um, so now I'm going to take some stamps <clears throat> mostly foam stamps that I have or ones that I've made out of um, rubber, you know, that speedball rubber. I also have this. This came with my um, pewter when I was doing the embossed pewter, but you can write. I'm writing love and just some little swirlies. I'm going to do, let's see, I want to see what these flowers look like. This is just um, kids foam. And I'm just going to, this is kind of like what it does with your um, jelly plate, right? I'm going to hopefully pick some of it up. See, look at that. Um, I have, what other scraping tool? I have this, I just cut the edge with my decorative scissors of a, like another gift card. So you could just like scratch some lines here and there. This is really thick over there. Um, kind of takes off a lot actually. Um, what else? But this is all just going to be, it's really thick. I don't know if I want it that thick. Um, what else? I want to do some more stamping and that should pick it up. Look, I have this big, this is by um, Claudine Helmuth, I think. I got this on Amazon. And let's see, look at that. It gives like the dendritic, is that what that's called? Effect. And I'm actually putting it back on 
too. I'm kind of losing some of the other stuff. And I should be stamping this onto a... It's kind of like jelly pr plate printing, right? Um, what else do I want to do at this stage? Because we are going to dry this. Let me have a look at it. That's cool. That has a lot of cool thick and thin parts. I think I'm going to use this little piece and kind of scrape off on the thick parts. I don't want it to be too, too thick. Just putting like cross hatching lines in some of those spots. I like it. So far, so good. Uh, I'm going to write love again because my love play enjoy and you won't see it necessarily but you might <clears throat> so now I'm going to get my heat gun out and I have sealed the page but I've also added some funness to it right so there's little secret hidden messages what I'm finding is by taking classes and <clears throat> real understanding what an art journal is all about um, I'm fine. I'm getting. I'm getting it. I'm getting looser, and understanding that it's a place for you to just play. Really, it doesn't have to be. I happen to film a lot of them, but I'm not going to film them all. Um, I could be writing. You know, me and Joe had a fight. I hate his guts. Da, 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 da. Like I could put all my horrible, which I don't. I love my husband. Um, but like you could put. And you know what, this might blister too, if I keep it, I could get some blisters on here. I just have really cool wrinkles and stuff and you're gonna see that when I put the base coat of color on when I do my background so I'm getting some blistering it looks like branches I don't know if you can see that like this is really thick All right, I think I don't want really, to really want it too thick along the edges. All right, let's see. That actually doesn't seem dry yet, but I'm going to go off camera and dry it. And I was just going to say, um, so yeah, so art journaling now for me has become everything like it's every it's not not in that way where everyone says it's everything you know what I'm saying <laughs> but it can be anything is what I'm saying um and journaling obviously is a place for you to put I used to journal a lot during my life in words um so this is a way to combine your words with art and I haven't actually gotten into that place yet where I am putting my words into my work um, it just isn't, it's not that for me. It's more just to play with color and texture and fun. Like, I'm not really putting my words in here. Maybe it'll develop and turn into that this year. We'll see. Um, but for now, so yeah, there's, this is still really wet. I'm going to go off camera and dry it. And then, you know what, I may not even do my piece on this page because it may be too textured. But I just wanted to share this way of basically prepping your page, but we're going to get all this texture. So I'll definitely do the background, and I'll do it in the color um, palette that I chose for this piece. And it's going to be based on this um, ske sketch that I did based on a CC 
Creations design and she did it in watercolor and I'm just going to change it up a little bit and um, create this scene um, <coughs> with acrylic paint and um, <clears throat> so we'll see how it goes but I may need to have a little bit of a flatter background I may not want to have such a textured background so I'll maybe I'm going to go prep another page just put gesso on it and um, and dry this one and then I'll come back and we'll play all right, I'll be right back. All right, I did it. I did a very similar page back here, only way thinner gesso, and I just did a little bit of the texturizing, and I'll show you what that looks like. But this one is just a really cool texturized background, and I can't wait to slap some paint on here. Now, to do that, <clears throat> I'm going to use glazing medium because it makes the paint sheer. You also can... Um, so in other words, when I use this yellow, it's not going to be opaque and it's going to be transparent. Well, that's opposite of each other. But anyway, so um, I'm sorry I'm talking kind of loud. I think I'm, I'm very excited. Um, <laughs> but I also had some coffee, so I might be a little whacked out on caffeine. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of this on my palette. And I have, I've been using this little um, palette here to just hold the paint and then I have a paper palette that I blend on and everything um, I am an, I repeat myself so much but I was a decorative painter for years and I have certain um, tools that I use based on that that I am now adding to my decorative painting so I mean to my mixed media painting and this is the palette I've chosen. This is called Fiesta Pink. And what I do is I don't have all those um, basics or the tube paints as much. I have a few. Um, and I am using them. The, the other piece I did, I used um, this, what is this, Galleria paint, I think it's called. Yeah, Galleria Ultramarine. And I've had it forever, and it, I mean, honestly, it could be over 10 years, and it's still perfectly good. So, really good investment, but, but I basically have all these bottles of craft paint, because that's what we use when we decorative paint it. So, I'm trying to use those. So, this happens to be kind of like a peachy pink, fiesta pink it's called, or a coral. So, <clears throat> I guess you would mix some pink and yellow to make that color, basically, I think. I don't really know. I'm not a color mixer. I'm a bottle baby. Um, this one's called Olive Green, and it's just a like a bright. See, look how shaky I am. Holy cow. This is Cad Yellow, and the blue is called Azure Blue. And I've been using turquoise a lot, but I thought I just wanted to switch it up. I'm using different um, colors that I have because I have, I mean, I could show you all my paint. That's my dog. All right, so, and I have a little glazing medium. I'm going to put a little more glazing medium. And this is actually the Joe Sonia brand because in the decorative painting world, she's the bomb. She's like one of the first ones probably to get her own paint line. Um, and I've had this again. I don't know if there's a date on here, but forever. And it's, it's great. So I'm going to use a big brush. And I'm just basically going to brush mix the colors. By that I mean... This is like a huge brush. I'm going to use, maybe I don't need this. Yeah, I'll use this. <clears throat> I'm going to put, I'm going to load my brush with the glazing medium and go over to my wet, um, my paper palette. <clears throat> so let me move some stuff out of the way and I'll show you what I'm doing. Can you see? Yay! Oh, I want this to be, there we go. I can make it um, flip around. Anyway, so now I have glaze on my palette. And let's do some of this blue first. So I've just dipped the corner of the brush in and I'm going right back and I'm just brush mixing it. So now there's glaze, excuse me, and paint on my brush and there's quite a lot. And I'm just going to gently, and you can already start to see, look at all that texture. And some of the paint is going into the, um, to the bottom of the, indentions that we made but look there it says love so I just think this is so like painterly when I used to paint we used to base coat everything opaque so your background was opaque your 
um, focal points were opaque and then you added the techniques on top of that you added shading and highlighting and details and I loved it and it's a great way to go but this is just exciting to me because it's not the same and I I'm just loving it. I do. I lo look how beautiful that color is. Like it's just a gorgeous color. So I'm going to do the same thing. I have some glazing medium on my brush and the pink this time, which it's more like a coral. And this piece is going to be kind of like a grass. So I'm going to end up putting the green over the blue a lot, but I'm just going to mix colors and see what happens. And then we can blend it out with um, white. So I'll show you how you can kind of, and for the piece I'm doing, this may be too textural. So I'm going to come back and um, see now, and pink and blue make purple, but in this case, it's kind of like more of a plummy purple. And as it dries, it changes too. And maybe I'll put a sun over here, so I'll put, I'll make that more yellow in a minute. And we're going to also do stamping on top of it. So this is how you basically um, you're adding interest because obviously the focal image is going to be what I want you to see. That's, that's ultimately the design, the composition of the page. But all this other stuff, it's just fun, first of all. I mean, if you don't think it's fun, don't do it. That's, that's it. That's the bottom line. If you don't like this, don't do it. No, there's no set rules, but this is what I'm kind of understanding. See, look how that changed green a little. So now I'm going to put some yellow over. Let's see, yellow and blue make green, yellow and pink make orange. So I could end up with like six or seven different colors on the sheet, on the page. See, that's turning a different color too. Um, I want to put the green on here, but boy, I think I've already covered the page pretty good. Maybe I'll just use that green. I, I just think this is too cool. I can see my love right there. Um, I don't know what that says. I don't know, it's cool, I see a flower. Do you see this stuff? I mean, it kind of looks like, it might look like a mess to you right now. But I am enjoying the process, and that's what's important. So if you're not enjoying the process, don't do it. All right, I'm gonna put a little more yellow because I think I'm just gonna let this make the green. If I go over the blue. Kind of gives me a, black, a green background. And this can be orange. And you might hate it. You might absolutely hate what I have done here. I haven't added any green, but I think I'm gonna because if I add it, um, later in the composition, it's supposed to supposedly be in the background somewhere. And I just love this color anyway, so. It's getting a little muddy, so I think I'm gonna stop. And we're gonna blend with white. And I'm just gonna do that with my finger. Um, Actually, before we do that, you know what another cool, cool thing is? And this is the Diane Reevely. Um, I'm taking my water bottle and making droplets. I'm not exactly spraying. I'm letting it drip. Um, but this is the um, Delusions Art Journal. And one of Di um, Diane's techniques that she uses is called ghosting. And I haven't tried my sprays in here yet, but what I have found is that this technique where I just put water, because that's how she does her ghosting, she either sprays another color of, sp of ink or water into a stencil or something, and then it lifts off. So I'm gonna show you how, how nicely this journal does that. And I'm just using a tissue. So I'm just giving it a second to kind of sit there. And then I'm just gonna put this on top 
and soak up the water. pushed a little too much but see I have right there white marks so that's why it's the, the gesso is nice too because um, the white shows through and then when I put a color on top of it it's gonna um, anyway it all comes together it all just all right so you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna wipe off my paper palette. I should be putting this on to another. Well, I don't have to. I'm a waster. I hate to say it. Um, that brush was just so big. Maybe I shouldn't be using... I was using that for the canvases and stuff because the canvases are such a big surface to cover. Alright, so I'm going to get my white out now. And we're going to do some white stamping and also color stamping too. I'll show you how I do that. So basically we're building a background. And this may look a mess right now. Don't get nervous. Um, you look at it and you might say, oh boy, this is just not working. But it is working. Because if you're having fun, then just go with it. Now this looks a little muddy up here. So I'm just going to take some white... Kind of even like dry brushy, and then it'll pick up the um, the texture underneath. This looks, I don't like this color. So I'm just going to go over it. And I'm liking everything else, the colors pretty much, except for like right over here. And I'm just going to do it softly. And look what I, you can see this. I just like doing this. This is so cool. We're going to add back in some uh, color. See, I don't like how that that color um, mixed. I don't like the way it turned out, so I'm covering it up. This all looks good, but i got to add a little white. And just by dragging it across there, it brings out the texture more. And I'll show you how. Um, now we're going to bring out some more good color, though. This just looks muddy to me. I don't like it. This color right here. It says play. So you can cover up. If, if something really went like you're just like, I hate that color, you can just blend it out. But I like that, so we're going to take now, I want to go back in with some blue and do some stamping and stenciling and uh, spattering and drippage, all that cool stuff. Um, first going to go in with some blue, I think. And let's see, I think stenciling. I'm going to do some blue in the sky because this is ultimately going to be a sky with trees. So there's going to be green back there too, and this is going to be like a, and there'll be stones, cobblestones coming down. And I don't even know if I'm going to use this background because it's so dimension or textured. I'm just going to take this, and I think I'm going to use an old scruffy brush that's like, this is, this is such a mess, this brush. Um, I just use it for glue or like Mod Podge and stuff, but I'm going into the blue, and I'm like kind of pouncing it on my palette and then I'm brushing off the paint because you don't want a lot of paint it's more of a dry brush effect and it shouldn't bleed under the um, the stencil this way it'll just give you that color through the holes see uh, and I'm gonna bring it down over here a little bit just a couple because that's going to be grass. Um, let's do some stamping with green. I have, I'm going to use the green to do this. And to do that, I take the green and make a little stamp pad out of it. So I'm just making it like that. 
this is messy. The background's messy. And I'm going to take this stamp and just stamp into it, get some paint on there, and stamp. And my house may cover that right up, so you might not see any of this. And now, it's a gr see how I'm going over all the white? And it's just building another layer. So I'm going to put some right here on that white. I want to keep that kind of yellow because that's where my sun's going to be. Um, what else do I want to do? The pink, right? Um, I'm going to wipe this off. I don't, use, I don't really wipe off my foam stamps because they're disposable. I'll make another one if I need to um, eventually. I'm going to wipe that off. Um, I think some pink, right? Don't you think we, we should add a little pink? How about... Because then I'm, the last thing I'm going to do is white, but I, I like this heart. We'll see how this turns out as a stamp. This is one of the Tim Holtz stamps. It's like a sketchy little heart. We'll see if I can get one. There we go. Right up in the sky. And again, you may see it and you may not. <clears throat> but it's there. Because um, I'll end up um, shading around all this stuff. So you and I'm just going to drop that in the water because it's just I'm rushing and I don't want to. All right, it's looking a little bit muddy, and I'm going to just do some white now. And white brightens it back up. I'm going to um, use one of my homemade. This is my like little swirl design and I like that for like sky and I don't know pretty much everything I could do some um, bottle caps too I have uh, what is this called punchinella but for now I'm just gonna do some white I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of glazing medium and I'm again I'm just making a stamp pad basically and it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just... I think I need some more blue. I gotta do some more blue. I'm gonna just make a little other... This is another Tim Holtz stamp. And I think I'm going to do some yellow. I think I'm just going to do that with um, bottle caps or maybe a little punchinella. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it with the punchinella. And again, I use that scruffy brush or you can use a um, cosmetic sponge or something, but just not with too much paint on it. You have to keep it really kind of a dry brush. And this has totally got a lot of blue in it. I should probably, I'm going to, I maybe, no, you know what? I think we'll be all right. So I'm going to use the punchinella this time. That's a smaller circle. Kind of represents the sun's rays shining down, but they're t they look like they're turning a little green, which is okay because trees are going to be there too. Try to bring it all the way down to in the grass and this will just turn green then the last things I'm gonna do is some drippage and spatter oh I forgot the bottle caps I think I'm gonna do them in white and again I make a little 
stamp pad, I'm going to do this bottle cap. It's a Snapple bottle cap. Might need a little more moisture. I'm going to use a little smaller one. I think adding the white is such a, it's, it just brightens everything up. But this background is so texturized that the, the image doesn't completely stamp, if you know what I mean. Like you'll hit a bump and it won't take. I'm going to do spatter. Let's spatter with green. I like to use this fan brush. It's a, um, this is a Shui fan, number zero, and it's got those like stiffer bristles to it. I'm going to load it up with water and take a little bit of white and get it really wet. And then I take another, like a pencil or something to hit it with. Whoopsie. And the wetter the paint, the bigger droplets you'll get. But I've had really good luck with this fan brush. I like the fan brush a lot for doing spatter. And then as it gets, um, <clears throat> you run out of paint a little bit, it, the specks get lighter. Like those look really watery, but I mean, they'll dry. Or if I were to dab it, maybe they would come off like the, um, the ghosting effect, you know? I like it, I'm starting to like it. It's starting to come together. I'm getting this all over me. Like my glasses all have spatter on me. All right. And then the last thing I'm going to do is some drippage. What color do I want to do my drippage? I've only done blue drippage so far. I did blue on my canvas that I did. I did blue on that, um, on my castle in the sky. I wonder if yellow or green. Maybe green drippage down here. That would look cool and blue from up there. I think that's what I'm going to do. Now for that, I like to use a big brush. So maybe I'll use, this one might be too big, but you know what? In this case, you want um, a lot of water in the brush because that's obviously what drips. And then the paint, the color paint you use, so it's similar to the spatter. You really want to water down uh, so let's see, we're going to do some blue drippage on the top. So again, I'm going to load my brush with water. Corner, I'm just getting a little bit of paint and I'm going over here and I'm mixing a wash. And hoping for the best. I'm going to tip my journal up and kind of slide my brush along the edge. There's a big one. There's another big one. Whoa. And see, you get drippage. And I could have gone all the way along there. I don't know if I want to keep it long. I think I do. And it went into some of the um, crevices and look, nooks and crannies. And I could turn it sideways and it might drip that way too. But I think I'm just going to leave it. And if you even wanted it to go further, you can squirt it with your water bottle and it like makes more. But I'm liking that. I never did drippage. I love it. All right. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do green drippage. Because, just because. But look, see, this is getting caught in some of the gesso and it's turned and it's going its own way. Isn't that cool? I like it.
going to flip it around and do the same thing with the green. But you know what? Green and blue. What do they make? I think they make mud. So I'm going to try not to let them join together. You can kind of blot it. This is a dry paper towel. Let's do that real quick just to... It won't really pick it up. It'll just dry that because underneath it's pretty dry. Good. And then I'm going to flip this around and do the green. I'm hot. i got to take off my sweatshirt. Ugh, can't grab it. Sorry, I'm stuck. I'm, oh, we go. I'm going to do, like I said, use that same big brush and the green this time. So I'm just loading my brush with water, tapping it a little bit, but this is filled with water. And then I just get a, like a corner, just the corner, and then I'm going to blend it on my palette. And it's really drippy. Actually, there's way more water than pigment in there. But let's see what happens. Okay. And I'm telling you, this is new for me. I've never, I have not done a lot of drippage in my art journaling, but I am liking it. And you just take the, the brush and pull it across. It might not even show up because it's so diluted. But I definitely got drippage, but I think it's too diluted. Oh, and it's, all, it's going all the way down the page. So let's turn it around. I see it though. It's not um, as opaque. Like it's not, I like it. I think I'm going to stick with it. It went into the um, <clears throat> gesso too, the way the, um, but I like it. It kind of, see how it took a turn here? It like went down, it took a turn into the gesso. It's a lot more subtle. You don't see it as much, but I like it. I'm going to leave it. All right, and that's basically it. You could come back with um, some more white or some more spatters. Um, let me see. Do I want to do more spatters? I kind of want to do some pink spatters. Let's do it because you know why? I'm having fun. And that's why. <laughs> that's why. These are small because I don't think I had as much water. They're tiny. I'm going to get a little bit more water. That's better. Ooh, plunk. Oh, man. <clears throat> Gorgeous. I just love it. Okay. But that actually added that pink, like... I can't explain it. All right, so this is going to be my sun. I'm going to have um, ground and blue sky. So I'm going to be shading too, but that's how you build a background. All right, so maybe this video will just be on how to build a background. And then I'll come back with, if you guys want to see the painting of the design. Um, but I'm going to do the other background too. I'm going to do it the very exact same way, um, just uh, let me turn this page. The only difference will be it doesn't have nearly the amount of texture to it that the other one did. It's still texture. I can feel the gesso, but I have, oh man, it's going to look cool. So I'm going to go away and do that, and then I'll come back and comp compare the two, and that'll be the end. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I just wanted to share what I'm doing here. So I know my sun's going to be here. I kind of want a blue sky and green grass. So that's what I'm basically doing this time is I'm really focusing on where I want the certain colors. And I threw the pink in there because I like pink to act as like my um, sunset or my horizon line. That's what I want to do. But this pink is such a nice orangey pink that I kind of mixed it with the yellow. And now I'm just kind of dry brushing too, like I'm really using every last little bit of paint that's on the brush. And I'm not, um, 
anyway I, I don't know I'm trying to explain it but I guess if you watch me you'll see so now I'm going to go into the blue and so I've used instead of um, I used the green this time instead of the blue mostly so I'm going to just load my brush with um, what is it called? glazing medium sorry and then get a little a corner load and then brush mix it on my brush and I'm gently gonna pull it on there I'm not pushing and look there's my love my love came out and I just put the um sorry I'm so like into this I can't even think of words um what is it washi tape so I'm kind of just putting the blue along the edge. I'm going to come this way too. It's kind of making green, but guess what? There's going to be trees. <clears throat> but I think I'm just going to put a little bit on the bottom just to bring the blue into it. And look how Believe is starting to show up because I'm doing a more of a dry brush down there. I love that. I love it. Look, you can see the flowers. Can you see that? Let me come in. So you can see the flowers that I stamped. There's plastic canvas. I wrote love, more flowers, plastic canvas, believe. I have my circle hearts. There's a heart there. There's a heart there. I just think it's super cool. It's like the secret hidden stuff. Like, I think I might just leave that and, and do the stamping and the um, stenciling on top of it and see where I get. Like, I don't even really need to blend in the white right now because I left some white. I'm going to put a little more green. I'm going to just pull some green. And you know what? We'll do drippage and maybe the drippage will show up better. I don't need any more green up there. I'll pull yellow. I'm going to pull yellow over that, but I think we're good. Um, so I'm going to get some more glazing medium, a little yellow. And again, just like a dry brush, I'm not pushing too hard and it's turning green because of the blue. But you know what I can do? I can stamp. I'll stamp or stencil. All right, cool. I'm stopping. And then we're just going to do some stamping and some stenciling. But you know what we should do first? Let's do that technique, that Diane Reevely. I don't even know. Oh. I kind of like it to be more drips than spray. There we go. That's quite a bit. <laughs> I think I made my bottle leak. Um... But that's a cool technique to get the white to pop through. Guys, I'm just excited because I'm figuring it out. I understand why. That's the whole thing. A lot of times you guys in the comments will say, but you did all that behind it. Why did you just cover it up? And now I can answer you because um, it's all part of the finished composition. So let's get this off here. Should I, I'm just gonna use a tissue again and pick that up. Um, I'll show you. I'm gonna go back to my castle in the sky. Look, there's a good, there's some good ones. I love it. I'm excited. It just makes me happy. So please, if it doesn't make you happy, turn off this video. Don't watch it. Don't do it. All right. So let me go back to the my castle in the sky video. Video. All right. <clears throat> so like if you look at this, I didn't do any stamping or anything to this to the castle. Anything that's on the castle like this um, plastic canvas mark. There's letters poking through there um, that all came from behind. And that's just part of, there's spatter marks on my sun up here. There's spatter actually all over the place. I see a lot of things coming through 
and that's why I co I'm covering it up. It's not, um, you're not meant to cover it all up. It's meant to shine through. That's why the glazing medium is such like an aha moment for me because I've always used water to get that effect and never really understood what the mediums were all about. Um, so that's what taking a class has helped me to learn. Um, you know, I learned what the mediums are there for and what they're there to do. Because I was able to get my desired effect with water, I never bothered with that stuff. And I was very good at it with water. So, anywho, this is just, so this is what the, the first one looks like with all that texture. And then this is what this one's turning out like so far. All right, so let's do some, um, gotta do stamping, stenciling, the whole thing. So I'll, I'll go away and do all that and I'll be back. I just wanted to show you how I was doing it differently this time. All right, I'll be back. Okay. All right, you guys, so that was so fun. I just wanna say that, my hand, I didn't wash my hands yet. I'm gonna go wash my hands and come back with a, another video where I'm gonna do the design onto this background. And I think I am gonna use the second one I did, but I wanna go over the differences. One thing I realized was, on the first one that we did that all that rich texture into the gesso, um, I blended some of the paint with white because I didn't like the mixes like that it made. It made mud in some places or, you know, colors that I just wasn't thrilled with. Um, and I used my fingers and I kind of smeared some white on there. And you can see that on this one. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, this has a lot more of a washy look to it, which I really, really like. Um, and of course, all that texture. I mean, I'm going to just zoom in. The, the cross hatching marks I made. I mean, I can touch this and just, this is a lot of cross hatching. And then it actually bubbled up when I did, um, when I dried it. I can still see it says something. <laughs> something you. Anyway, here I wrote love, believe is up here. So I can still see all of that stuff. Um, the spatter I love, my love my drippage. So that's kind of what I'm learning. And I may, I may discontinue some of these techniques if it, if it becomes too much to me, but right now I'm loving it. I think it's rich. And then when I add my, my design, some of those elements will show through, but I'll cover up most of it. I'll, I will be covering it. So um, that is not the final result. Then here's the other one we did, or I did. This is just a lot flatter texturized background. There's still texture. I can see um, it says love here. I had, now I've gone over it with the, the plastic canvas. You see these check marks? Here, those are the plastic canvas, but I did that in the background too. See here, this is the plastic canvas underneath the paint. Um, over here, it's definitely, this is the plastic canvas into the gesso, so it's coming through. Um, and I did not do that step, let me go back out, sorry. I didn't do the step with the white on this one because I had added less paint to begin with and didn't think I, and I liked my colors more. I didn't make mud and um, so I didn't do that little um, finger painting with the white and it's different. It looks different. So every little bit, see look, this one has more of a washy effect to me. Anyway, they're very similar. I came back and I did a lot more blue to make, to definitely make a sky and grass and a sun I went with that on this one purposely. And on this one, I kind of was just freer with the paint and put it everywhere. So I got totally, there's way more pink in my grass area. And it's just, anyway, I'm um, going to come back. I'm probably going to work on this one just because it's flatter. And I think I'll have a lot less trouble when I go back to with my dip pen. Because I like to put my... I'm going to put my detail lines on with my dip pen, and the less bumpiness, the better for this. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, so
so yeah so this is what I'm now experiencing with my mixed media um, not for everyone please just do it if you enjoy it like I loved this this was so fun for me and that's all I'm saying is don't if it's not fun don't do it okay all right so that's it I'm gonna clean up and get ready for putting my design on here all right you guys thanks for watching